Uh, let's welcome in uh, uh, Michael Gentry here. He Gentry. Is, uh, yeah, let's let's get our boy in here. Michael Gentry, welcome to the program. Yeah. How are you doing, my guy? Beautiful How hat. You doing? Oh, thanks, Boone. As always, you know I'm rocking the hat. But it's been a great day, boys. Obviously, uh, these guys made some moves, so, you know, we love it. It's been a great day. Oh, How are the boys? Yeah, Stevie, hey, they were, you know, some people were trolling Stevie, made, made a couple little signings the last couple days, and people were like, really? You know, what are we doing here? And then he drops the bomb. Vladimir uh, Tarasenko just signs him to, what, a two-year deal? Yeah. Um, and this is a guy who's in six seasons in his career has had 30 plus goals. What what are the Red Wings getting in Vladimir Tarasenko? I know he played well in the playoffs last year, but can you can you go through and, and talk about what he provides for this team? Well, obviously, two time Stanley Cup champ winner, and I, he, he's replacing David Perron in that top six. And you're obviously going to get way more production out of him offensively. Not so much on the defensive side, but to get him two years, 4.75. And obviously you dished off Robbie Fabry to make some extra cap for that. And hopefully another move for that right-handed D-man. But, man, it, it's a great move. That That's going to benefit in multiple areas. His goal scoring, it, it's going to add a whole nother level to this team. And then, you know, power play one, power play two, wherever they decide to toss him, it's just going to be an extra boost there. So this is kind of the ideal signing that you wanted as a Red Wings fan. You know, you get Tarasenko, a great goal scorer to add to your top six on a reasonable contract for two years. You didn't have to go out and spend $8 million on Stamkos. You didn't have to go out and overpay anyone else. This was the perfect signing. And as I said the other day, you just have to be patient because, you know, obviously last year the Debrinket trade took till July 10th, so seven days from now. But he had the space and, you know, he was just waiting for the right move. He wasn't going to overpay. He knew that this addition was, you know, the right one for the team. So he went out and got him. Yeah. I, I mean, listen, it, Boone, this move, um, it was worth the wait. I'll tell you that. Yeah. I, I mean, dude, the only thing, and I said this to Gentry the other day when we were talking about the wings, I just wanted the wings to like, just make moves to where like this, this franchise moves forward. You're, you were one or two games out. And I think honestly, I, I say it a lot. I, I do think like if, if Larkin, if Larkin's injury doesn't happen, they probably make the playoffs. But you were like one or two games away from making the playoffs last year, even with the Larkin injury for a little bit. It's like, dude, all you have to do is just improve a little bit. Like, and 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 you remember all the people what they were saying, like the, the spit and chicklets and those guys were like, if the wings get in, they can make noise. It's like all you have to do is just get in next year, and then let whatever happens happens. Like, I think that's all this team needs to do is get in the playoffs. And it sounds like Tarasenko is like the guy to like. All right, maybe this puts us over a little bit. Yeah, no, I, I agree as far as that goes. I think he's a guy that could help. And um, obviously, the our offense was kind of slower last year, and we were begging to see those young guys. So when a lot of people were panicking over not signing people, I was like, well, don't you want to see these young prospects come up and get their time? And with a signing like this, you still have your bottom six open where you can plug and play some of those guys. And then you obviously have two spots on the defensive end for Johansson and uh, Edmondson. So you're still going to get that – that youth movement that we all wanted, and you still added goal scoring to your top six. So, like, the Tarasenko move, I already thought this year you have to make playoffs. Stevie had to go out and make the moves to make this team a playoff team, and I still think there's still some moves to be made. You have three goaltenders, and you still need a right-handed shot on the defensive end. So I still think there's still some stuff to happen, but Tarasenko was a huge step forward in your top six. Yeah, I mean, they they signed – they signed Tarasenko, and then right after, they traded Fabry, uh, yeah. and they cleared four million in cap space. So yeah. you basically signed him for what? Well, I think it's like four point two five for. I think it was uh, four seven five. I could be wrong. So, so then you clear Clearly, four million ballpark. right after. Um, so uh, I mean, from Stevie, Steve, his perspective, still like you said, more moves to be made as he business stuff there... with Patrick Kane. Yeah, they played together. What with the Rangers? Yes, for like a Rangers. year, or something like that. Yeah, and Patrick Kane wasn't fully healthy when he played for the Rangers. So like him getting, we seen what he did last year when you know that that surgery he had is not an easy surgery for him to come back from. Still was a point per game guy. Now he has a whole off season to keep working at it, and then you know he's got training camp with the wings. So. I think, you know, it, it's it's going to be a great time for, you know, those two getting back together on the ice healthy. So, yeah. Uh, is there Are they going to make another massive move? Like, is there another big-time player that will get added in a trade? Or is it just kind um, of like now it's just depth? Um, I would say, you know, 
I think one of those goaltenders will be offloaded. I, I just don't see them starting with three. And Huso has battled so many injuries. Cam Talbot was kind of an insurance signing, and he played very well for the Kings last year. You know, didn't play so well in the playoffs. But I think no matter what, you have to go add a top four right-handed defenseman. You have a lot of guys that you can punch it on the third line as far as your D pairs go. But you need another guy in that off or that top pairs. That that would be my thing. A right-handed defenseman. I know there's a couple guys out there, but I don't know if it's going to be via trade if they have to offload some more cap to kind of get that situation right with whoever they're looking for. But definitely a right-handed defenseman. What do you think about this comment? Diggity says ninth best offense, 25th best defense. Why is everyone talking about scoring? Yeah, I, I mean, I agree with that to a certain extent, but I think, you know, the, the younger forwards will kind of help out that group and balance the offense throughout four lines. And then your top six got better. So you got to always kind of talk about your offense and uh, the defense. I think, you know, people are kind of sleeping on the Edmondson, the Johansons a little bit. People were pushing to kind of get these guys in the lineup last year. And now that their time's finally here, we're kind of scared to watch them take that step. But I think those guys will help that. And like I said, um, they're going to add a right-handed defenseman to go in that top four decor, 100%. Yeah, that um, – <laughs> I, mean, I will say it was worth the wait. All right, well, I know we were, we were coming at Steve you a little bit. Not in joking matter, but, hey, Gentry likes it. We like it. All right, that's fair. No uh, Stevie sure, by here. What no. about uh, – yeah, <laughs> Lucas – uh etn says i'm just gonna agree with everything gentry says uh what do you think about the deadline at least the uh trying to acquire a goalie i see uh ryan mentioned that uh would that be more so a, a deadline move like okay let's see let's evaluate goaltending and go out and, and get someone yeah yeah it could be a kind of a thing because you kind of maybe work who so back into things and then you roll with three guys at first and then kind of dish off one of the three. So that could be an option. I just, I don't know if I feel like if, I don't know if you're going to dish off a goalie at the deadline, you're going to make a goalie deadline deal. You're going to bring in someone too. So I feel like, I don't know that that's tough. I think if they're going to go get their goalie, they'll probably get them now rather than wait on it and try and, you know, backpedal and hopefully a goalie falls into their lap at the deadline. I think they want to go out and kind of get that situation secured as soon as possible. I see the comments about uh Detroit supremacy and Pistons talk. It is a playoff team, but we do need a little more help on defense. Everson would be nice. Uh, would love to see the Truba trade happen though. Yeah, I mean, I would love to see the Truba trade happen too, but when deals like that happen, obviously there's a lot of stuff involved with this family. I kind of read a story about that, all the stuff his wife is doing. So it's it's more than, you know, just him wanting to get traded here. He's leaving actual situation behind in New York. and But he's a great player. I think there would have to be a lot of money taken out or retained, rather, from New York. And uh, you would maybe even have to dish off one of your defensemen. But one of those bottom guys, I'm sure Red Wings fans are totally fine with dealing off. So I would love the Truba trade. I don't know if uh, that's going to be the move, like I said, because you have to do a lot of things with his contract. I don't think they're going to take that big contract on. So mm -hmm. uh, I think I would maybe lower the bar a little bit now, especially given that situation and everything that we've heard, you know, come out about Jacob Truba. So. Yeah, That's I fair. think they're, they're maybe lower the bar. There's still a good defenseman coming. Just like I said a couple of days ago, don't panic. This forward signing was coming. I didn't know it would be Tarasenko. I thought they would have kind of went uh, a trade route after how the free agency boiled down to start off with. But, I mean, you got the best free agent left on the board today.